I call this meeting of the Board of Parks and Recreation to order. I am Michelle Cummings Steele, Chair of the Board. Uh, we'll stand, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please. <clears throat> We'll move now to the appeal of decisions pursuant to the provisions of 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws. Please take notice that decisions of the Metropolitan Board of Parks and Recreation may be appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiori. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity Considering an appeal should consult with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. We will move now to the consideration of the minutes. Have you had an opportunity to read the minutes? I move for approval. Thank you so much. Is there a second? Second. Uh, uh, it's been properly moved and seconded. Any questions? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you so much. We'll move now to Metro Council referrals. Are there any referrals from council members present? Director Odom. No, there are none. Thank you so much. We'll move now to the consent agenda. I will accept the motion to accept the con consent agenda in its entirety. So moved. Thank you so much. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. We'll move now to new business 08-21-02. Staff requests approval to accept donation of support from the Tennessee tennis Association estimated at $10,000. This donation includes COVID-19 supplies, power washer, nets, tennis balls, and other equipment, which will help the Centennial Sportsplex maintain its facilities. This donation does not require a matching donation, nor any type of further fulfillment by Metro Parks. Director Odom is there, staff recommendation. Staff recommends approval. Thank you so much. I'll accept the motion. So moved. It's been, uh, thank you. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there, are there any questions or any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Moving to 08-21-03, the Tennessee Ornithological Society requests acceptance of an in-kind donation of $3,950 for the installation of bird, of bird crash deterrent window film. That exists? Oh. For the Shelby Bottoms Nature Center, there is no match or other obligation to Metro or Metro Parks regarding this project. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Thank you so much. I'll accept the motion. Thank you. Thank you. It's been properly moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 08-21-04, request for approval to enter into a letter of agreement allowing the owners of parcel 173 Zero 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 nine four zero zero, located at 5595 Pettus Road, driveway access across a portion of Metro Parks property, parcel number 173-0009500, located at 5601 Pettus Road, part of Orchard Bend Park, as part of a public works roundabout project at the intersection of Blue Hole Road and Pettus Road. Public works will construct the driveway and, driveway and relocate a, a gate as part of this project. We will defer this um, item to acquisition. 08-21-05 Centennial Park Conservancy requests approval of a grant in the amount of uh -huh, 1.7 million, 32, 1.7 $732,157. We got to look at all those zeros, you know, yeah. For the construction of the Children's Memory Garden in Centennial Park, Metro Parks will contribute $250,000 as a match to fund the remaining project expenses. Metro Parks staff has reviewed and approved all project, proposed projects and will continue to finalize details of plans, materials, and scheduling as projects move forward. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval. Thank you so much. I'll accept a motion. Are there motion. any questions? Motion for approval. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? Are there any uh, questions or discussion? I have a question. Yes. Um, on the um, portion that parks will contribute, which bucket of 
funding did that come from? It is coming out of one of the capital spending plans, Centennial Park Master Plan implementation be used. And sorry, one more further question. Mm -hmm. Is there, um, are, I, I, I'm assuming that the Conservancy is still undergoing um, fundraising for this. Um, is, that, is that true? My understanding is the funds have been secured. Are there any other questions or discussion? All righty, I'll accept the motion. Make a motion. Right. I already did that, huh? Oh, you did that, I'm sorry. Yeah, scratch that, I apologize. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. 08-21-06, the Historical Capital Corridor Foundation, HCCF, requests acceptance of an in-kind gift of roughly 425,000 for the purpose of providing continued programming in maintenance of and staffing for Church Street Park from August 3rd to two, August 3rd, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval and Ms. Ann Butterworth with the Historical Capital Corridor is Corridor Foundation is here to address this matter. If you would like to, thank you. Um, is it okay to remove the mask? Hello, I'm Ann Butterworth and as stated, I'm president of the Historic Capital Corridor Foundation and serve along with Charles Bone, Ivanetta Davis Samuels, Hal Harden, Lee Millette, Dee Patel, and Carrie Slatery. We so appreciate the working relationship that we have with Parks Department, this board, Councilman O'Connell, the mayor, and his office concerning the Church Street Park which as you may know is located between A and Dallas Dudley Boulevard, Sixth Avenue along Church Street across from our main library. Our foundation requests to make an additional in-kind gift of roughly 425,000 for the purpose of continuing the programming, um, maintenance and staffing of the Church Street Park through the remainder of fiscal year 20, um, Two. Uh, the goal of this gift is to continue on the efforts that have occurred so far during the preview session that y'all previously approved. As y'all have been moving quickly through your agenda, I will try to keep this presentation short, but would be available to answer questions. Um, we made several physical improvements, and I believe copies of these slides will be made available to you, so I'll go through them quickly. Um, we uh, cleaned, opened up the space, updated the lighting, um, added new plantings and planters, and have uh, added flexible furniture, tables, chairs, and umbrellas. We have worked to create a cohesive park identity, which has been very helpful with the name recognition. This parcel used to go by several different names, and it's really developing a sense of identity in its own space. Um, we have had very exciting programming so far. We've had um, 18 different weekly series, uh, various free events, um, quite a few uh, attendees, and I will say that there have been people there, not only nearby neighbors, folks from elsewhere in the county, folks from surrounding counties. We have had construction workers. We have had um, uh, tourists come in and everyone so far has been very thankful for having the space open and available. We have a recess cart that's available uh, with art supplies and games that can be um, borrowed. Uh, we've had various programming working not only uh, with some uh, providers such as the children's hula hoop but also with the library uh, and their programs. Our fitness programs have included uh, yoga, Zumba, um, hula hoop, and meditation. Uh, we also have worked and provided musical events, historic tours, worked with nonprofits, with animal adoption, um, have had an urban sketching class. 
and very successful uh, night at the movies. I was very surprised by the number of people who have asked when we're gonna be starting that back up. An issue I had not realized is you really have to wait till it starts to get dark so you can actually see the movie. Um, here are some indications of attendees at various events that we have had. Um, our staffing is there from six to nine. Uh, we have an opening procedure and a closing procedure. And although the chains across uh, the walkways into the park clearly cannot prevent someone from entering if they want to, we have found just this simple statement has served well to indicate uh, that the park is closed uh, at night. Uh, and as I've said, we've had a lot of positive feedback from people. Um, it was really fun the other day, a father and his daughter were walking back to their hotel. The daughter participated in one of the programs. And when uh, the father was walking away, he said this was a lovely way to end their visit uh, to Nashville. So here are some before and after pictures. And I would like to close with asking you to consider approval of our request. Um, we would coordinate with Councilman O'Connor and come back to you early next year to talk about fiscal year 22 to 23. We also anticipate having some exciting news to share in the coming weeks about new partners and support for the park. Um, and in conclusion, thank you very much and I can answer any questions or try to answer any. Any questions? Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Seeing none, I will accept the motion. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I'll make a, a motion to approve. Thank uh, you so much. It's been properly moved and seconded. All those mm -hmm. in favor? I apologize. Go ahead. Um, so we, I think we talked about opening the trucks in August here last time. So I don't know if that was voted on or did you not talk about it? I, I didn't know what, if that was, I just want to make sure we didn't vote on something that we're not. We did not vote on an RFP. Okay. We um, gave opportunity for others, to remember others mm -hmm. to come and assert their interest in the park. And then, um, as you may recall, the um, uh, Civic Design Center mm -hmm. held a, um, a forum for other, others to come and uh, the public and others who are um, interested to um, to give input about the park. And we had it here too. And we had yeah. it here mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll just acknowledge that uh, Councilman O'Connell and I have um, been in conversation <clears throat> along with HCCF and Civic Design to talk about the future of the park. And one of the things that um, he has, has talked about, and I support um, certainly keeping the park active, but then that Metro has some skin in the game. And so what he has asked me is to, um, for the, upcoming um, fiscal year FY23 to um, have some um, a funding request for improvements and, and staffing or whatever we would need to activate the park but we can certainly talk about um, options to permitting a group to operate the park like we do with others um, while this will continue to remain public space. So, I was just making sure we didn't vote on something that no we have not. Okay. Mr. Couldn't remember. No, sir. Thank you. Quick question for Ann. Ann, what role is the library playing in input for your programming activities? With, I'm not sure I know your uh, specific. We are working with them to come up with creative ways of supporting each other in doing that, I am not or have not been directly involved in those discussions, but I know that Lee Millette on our board is also on the Library Foundation Board. Um, but if you have a specific, I'd be glad to get the answer and, uh, for you and get back to you. Yeah, I, I just think from a long-term sustainability perspective, if the library plays a role in helping with programming uh, beyond this calendar year or fiscal year, I think it's gonna, increase the chances this is successful. So just make sure Absolutely. you try to include somebody from the library in those efforts. We, we have found that several people who have come 
for the uh, library's children program. The parents have actually come back and participated in other programs. One woman um, from Clarksville <laughs> had come with her daughter for the library function and then came back for some of the evening functions. Also, it's been very interesting to me to see the variety of people using the park, whether it is coming to attend uh, a programming event, utilizing the tables and chairs, uh, either to rest or to have, bring their lunch in. A lot of the construction workers downtown have been using uh, the park during their lunch break, but a lot of people are coming in with books and sitting down for a while and reading. So um, hopefully that will continue, not just with library, but with other parts of the city. I think the idea of working with and not working in conflict with other activities or services uh, going on is what uh, the foundation would like to see in the park. And again, um, keeping it so that it's open for everyone to feel comfortable there um, and that it's available for all people. But in, any suggestions we would be glad to take. Thank you so much. Ms. Butterworth. We have a uh, motion on the floor, been properly moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. <clears throat> We're moving to 08-21-07. John Smith of John Smith Marketing requests approval to host the Old School Barbecue Festival on October 2nd and 3rd, 2021 at Riverfront Park. This application includes requests for ampli amplification, fundraising, and alcohol sales. Director Odom, is there a staff recommendation? Staff recommends approval, and Mr. Smith is here uh, before you today, as you all may recall, um, back in, I think, December of 2018, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Smith appeared before you to appeal um, a uh, denial of a, of a permit. I think he, the following year, he took the event to another property, but is, is back and requesting to ho host this event. Uh, on Park's property, and I understand he's been working very favorably with our staff. I, I'll defer to Jim Hester to um, add any comments, but we'll also ask that if you're okay with it, Mr. Mr. Smith come forward and um, talk about what he's done. I know in the, um, as he was here the last time, I think the request of the board was that Mr. Smith uh, return with a, um, a security plan um, a plan for making sure that um, the attendance of the event did not exceed what was on the application. And then, um, I can't remember what else. Um, the board requested that Mr. Smith bring a security plan, a maintenance cleanup plan, and a plan on how he intends to manage ticket sales and regulate the numbers, numbers sold when he appears before the board. And it says here in March, but he had his event elsewhere, but we are picking up from that point. So. Mr. Mr. Smith. How you doing? How's everybody? Well, um, back again. Uh, this is the eighth year. It's the largest urban music festival that in this area that, that we do. It's called the Old School Barbecue Festival. And uh, I had a, a lot of homework to do to, um, for Mr. Hester and Lisa King to get everything in, in order. And I provided them with uh, everything that they requested. And I'm just here to uh, get approval. Um, just excited about um, being back at the riverfront. Uh, John has met with us several times already. He's worked with us with the park police and with uh, parks maintenance. And we feel that he's really committed to public safety and having a successful event. So we recommend approval. Are there any questions from the board? Seeing none, all those, I'll accept the motion, I'm sorry. Move approval. Thank you so much, is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes, thank you so much. John, what's the mm -hmm. fundraising for? Mm -hmm. The fundraising. Okay. Okay. Drug and Wetness is the nonprofit. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you so much again for being here. We're moving now to special presentations. Yes, we're not, we're not. That's right, you just told me that. So we're done with the business. We are done with the business. I would like to comment. 
Thank you. I'd ask that I could just make one follow-up comment just to, um, I provided um, this update um, at the uh, Parks Board meeting last week, but would also like to um, further update you all on, um, in regard to the request for e-bikes to be on greenways. Uh, we had a um, productive meeting among stakeholders and staff city leaders um, last Friday, and um, we are working collaboratively to determine what the best course forward is for Metro. So it will be addressed um, on a city level. And uh, again, the meeting was productive. Uh, appreciate the um, leadership of uh, Council Member uh, Berkeley Allen and um, uh, Council Member Mendez. Um, along with stakeholders. So we will be moving forward on that and we'll follow up. I will keep you updated on that. Okay. Thank you. So this is our special meeting. So I'm a little discombobulated. One moment. We're not doing any of the presentations. No, it's all done. So that's the end of our meeting. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. All those in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you all so much for being here and for adjusting your schedule to accommodate the meeting today. We appreciate it. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit Nashville.gov.